Hey guys, welcome back to my garage. In this video, I'm going to show you uh, an upgrade that I've been doing to an OmniTurn uh, CNC control. Um, what it really consisted of is updating the old CRT to uh, an 8 inch LCD monitor and uh, putting a DOM, which is disk on module, solid state drive, and then uh, reloading the software. Um, I'm not going to get into a ton of details, but I kind of want to do the overview so that you guys know um, that have OmniTurns and you want to upgrade the uh, old CRT monitor, you want to get rid of the, uh, <clears throat> the dual floppy drives and uh, go with a, a disk on module solid state drive. So uh, let me get the camera turned around here and I'll show you what I've been working on. Okay, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to take things apart. So this is the inside of the computer that came out of the chassis. This is the power supply. I'm going to get it out of the way so you, I'm going to kind of go backwards because I've partially done an assembly here, but I want to show you what was involved. So I've already taken the, I've taken the screws off the back so the power supply will slip right out. And then this is the video board. Now this is a new VGA card and it replaced the original uh, monochrome card that was in the machine for the Amber CRT monitor. So we'll go ahead and pop that out. Basically just a Phillips screwdriver right here on the side. Okay, there's the VGA card. Double row 15 standard SVGA connector. It's a standard VGA card. Um, now I got this one online and it's very difficult to find these 16-bit ISA cards. This is an ISA card. Um, but I found this one online. Um, it just says AVGA1 and this one's actually made in the United States. So uh, this one worked out. <coughs> And then this is the, the I.O. card. It has both floppy and IDE controllers on it, serial parallel port on board as well. Now this one's an Acer card. I don't know if you can see that. It's a MIO-400KF revision F. Now, I, I, I had, the, the original one would not work with the uh, DOM drive, and here it is right here. It's a 250 megabyte drive. I got it on eBay. Um, this was about 15 bucks. It was nothing. But you see it plugs right into the IDE port, and it comes pre-formatted and bootable. Um, so anyway, I would suggest looking for the Acer MIO-400KF revision F IO board um, because I know that it will work with the DOM drive. The original one would not. I could not get this this drive to boot on it. So anyway, um, and then while I was here, this the motherboard battery was bad. It wouldn't hold the parameters in BIOS. So I got a an external battery and plugged it on plugged it on here on the motherboard, it's an external battery port. And also this jumper, this happens to be, uh, let me lean over here, it's a BEK3703 motherboard. Uh, there's a jumper, JP2 right here. That jumper needed to go on to tell the motherboard it's gonna be using a color monitor. So I put that on there. So anyway, let me uh, reassemble this. Um, one thing 
that's a good idea is these contacts. It's good to take a clean eraser and clean the contacts before you stick them back into the, the ISA slot. It was more difficult trying to source the, uh, the parts, the IDEIO. At least you'll know what worked, at least in this application. And uh, a VGA card, a 16-bit VGA card. Um, again, I just tried this one. Um, it worked fine with the monitor that I got. And the monitor, I'll show you in just a second, is an 8-inch EYOYO LCD monitor. I got it off of eBay. Um, Omniturn did or does sell kits. They use the 8-inch monitor, so that's why I picked an 8-inch monitor. And um, I upgraded the keyboard because the keyboard on the, uh, the the membrane keyboard was shot on the control so I'm gonna put this right in front of the control I'm just gonna probably use some heavy-duty velcro and double stick it right in front of the old membrane keyboard um, you can get this keyboard it's an inland uh, off of Amazon it's a very small thin profile keyboard um, this one says stock number seven zero zero one one so 70011. Uh, it's a PS2 keyboard, and then what you do is you get a PS2 to an AT adapter for your motherboard. So that's another thing that I had to get. Let me set the power supply back in here. And then I'll give you a look at the, uh, the monitor. Okay, here's the monitor. Again, it's an EYOYO. -O. Um, it happened to work well with it. This is a model S80. It's an S801H. And this is actually has a resolution of 1024 by 768, but you'll be running it in 640 by 480. And uh, it has this little T slot, or it has like a little Visa bolt pattern here. The, once we get everything tested, then I'll figure out how to mount it in the chassis behind the existing uh, monitor screen. So anyway, let's see, I'll go ahead and set it there and we'll go ahead and power it up. Okay, you can see it's booting there. And it booted to DOS. Now, let me go into the BIOS setup to show you how easy it was to configure the BIOS. You gotta tell the computer what kind of monitor you got connected and the hard disk. So let me shut it down. All right, so I'm gonna power it up and when it comes up, it'll say press delete. So I press the delete key. There, I press delete. Okay, here's setup. So on the standard setup, I pressed enter. The only thing that I needed to do is go down here to, to the display and change it. You just use the page, up, page down key in my case, and we're using VGA. And then as far as the hard disk drive, we go to, let's go back up here. As far as the hard disk drive, we do a auto detect hard disk. And there it automatically looks at the DOM, the solid state drive, and picks its parameters. So we'll say yes. And then we don't have a D drive. So we say yes. And then we go down, we write to CMOS and exit. And there you see it booting. You see it's 6.22, and if we do a directory DIR, so it's got MS-DOS on it. 
Um, now, the other thing that needed to be done, and let me get the, uh, the sheet. I went to OmniTurn's website and I got the instructions on uh, downloading the software to create the bootable disk. And uh, it's on omniturn.com forward slash underscore private lowercase p r i v a t e forward slash h d s u 336.exe. Now, the trick here is you're going to need a computer, probably Windows 7 or, or XP, with a floppy drive. I had an XP machine and I used a USB floppy drive to create it. So you download this file, HDSU336, and you put it on your desktop, and you put a blank formatted floppy in your floppy drive, and then you just double click on HDSU336, and what it does is it creates a bootable floppy um, that we're going to use to install the software on the uh, solid state drive. So uh, it's pretty self explanatory, but again, it's uh, www.omniturn.com forward slash underscore private, P R I V A T E, all lowercase, forward slash HDSU336.exe. Um, also, the other thing that needs to be done is we need it to boot from the floppy drive. So let me go into BIOS first. Do Control Alt Delete. We'll hit Delete. And we're going to go into, let's see, I think we want Advanced. Yes, so we're going to go down here, System Boot Up Sequence A and then C. So that's what we want. So we're okay there. If it was C, let me, show you, let me show you what it is. If it's C and A, you need to change that to A and C. So we'll just exit out of that. We're not going to save it. Do you want to quit without saving? We'll say yes. Okay, I'm going to power it down. I've already created the disk. I've already created the disk with the, with the file that we needed. So all I need to do is I need to ins insert it into the A drive. So let me get that ins inserted there. Get you back up here so you can see what's happening. All right, let's power it up and see what happens. Okay, looks like it's booting to the floppy disk. And that floppy disk uh, had the install files on it. Okay, OmniTurn hard drive setup format will run next. Follow on screen prompts. Name the volume OmniTurn. Strike a key when ready. Yes, we're going to continue. Basically says all existing data on the non-removable disk C will be destroyed. Continue? Yes. And it's, here it says enter the volume label. Well, it says to create OmniTurn. Okay, we hit enter. Transferring the operating system. So it's made the disk bootable. It's replaced the DOS that was on the drive with uh, Caldera's DOS. The other thing I'm going to do while I'm here doing maintenance is I'm going to swap out the floppy drive in the computer, put a brand new one in for A. Um, the one that's in there works, but uh, 
it's just a matter of uh, maintenance and I'm probably going to go ahead and replace the uh, power supply as well. There it's copying all the files. It's amazing how powerful the control is and it all works off of one 1.44 uh, meg floppy disk. It's kind of getting tough to find parts for these old computers and in this case because the motherboard it, or because the case is so slim the cards sit in a sit horizontally so if you had to replace this motherboard you'd have to find one with an ISA slot to be able to accept the uh, the riser card when this is all done then we go back and we make uh, the C drive the first boot device instead of A select your monitor type press V if you have a VGA LCD color monitor or M if you have an amber monochrome well we have VGA so we're going to press V I would imagine that puts uh, all the displays all the uh, anything that comes up on the monitor in color you are now set up for VGA LCD color monitor press any key to reboot then quickly press the delete prompt press delete button when prompt appears to enter CMOS setup then go to advanced or chipset feature setup and change the boot sequence to CA then press F10 to save exit remove the hard drive setup disk from drive A okay so we're ready to uh, do that press delete we we'll go advanced we're gonna go down here we're gonna change this page up all right we're gonna escape right to CMOS and exit we gotta eject the floppy so it doesn't try and read it right to CMOS and exit yes enter okay now we're going to configure the software so I've booted it up and uh, you can see there it says this is the Omniturn factory auto exec for service and test run choices will boot to this menu setup choices will boot to the Omniturn CNC menu strike a key alright so what we want to do is number four set up attachment this was a basic attachment this is where you would set up uh, which one you you might have but in my case uh, the model I have is a basic Omniturn attachment was on a hard hardinge uh, dovetail lathe so we're going to pick number four would you like to back up your program files yes or no I'm going to say no and is loading the software lubricate X and Z axis rail bearings with number two lithium grease indicate completion by pressing yes so I'll do that and there we are and it's ready to to go ahead and run so that's all there was to it now I need to get it put back into the uh, into the chassis so all that needs to be done now is I need to put the computer back in the chassis and uh, power it up and test the servos